Hello, everybody. My name is Jimmy Smith, and welcome to the Wine with Jimmy channel. Thanks for stopping by. So, this is a channel dedicated to helping those of you studying for wine certificates, and this one specifically is for the WSET level three. So this is going to be looking at the vine, which I believe is chapter four in the textbooks. And we're looking at the anatomy of the vine to begin with. So this will be free content available on YouTube and also on my portal. All other videos which are for the vine will only be accessible on the online portal, my e-learning portal on the winewithjimmy.com website. So please visit, sign up and enjoy all of the extra and exclusive content. There's a huge database of videos there. Uh, there's also plenty and plenty of um, support in terms of uh, revision sessions. There is um, flashcards, uh, short written answer questions, multiple choice questions, you name it, it's there to help you through the level three certificate. Any comments, questions or concerns about the video, please do get in touch by leaving a comment underneath this video on the YouTube comments or get in touch via social media, which you find at the bottom of every slide, or uh, you can get in touch direct at the Wine with Jimmy website. So let's have a look at the anatomy of the vine, all the specific parts of the vine which you are required to know at the level three certificate. Um, so first of all, we're going to be looking at the green parts of the vine. And the green parts of the vine are those that uh, are the new freshly grown parts of the vine. So they grow very new every year. Uh, so therefore they are that current year's growth. So that's what we're going to be looking at. The principal structure that you can see here, we actually have a, uh, a hardened cane, a one-year-old wood at the bottom. We're ignoring that for now. We're just looking at all these green parts. And these green parts, as you can see here, um, they are all uh, kind of centered on um, what we would call a main shoot. So this part in the middle is what we could call the main shoot. Um, and of course, within there is the stem, which is the center part of all parts of the, vi of the vine and plants. Um, but we don't need to go into too much detail about that for the level three certificate. Um, and then attached to the main shoot, you have everything else, which includes things like leaves, buds, uh, tendrils, and then things like flowers, and then, of course, berries. So we'll go through each of the main parts of those one by one so you can understand what they are. Um, first up, then, we have the tendrils. OK, so the tendrils have been clearly identified just there. Um, there's actually they're also here as well. And the tendrils are really what I would say are the arms uh, of the um, or the limbs, maybe, of the vine or of the plant, as they are there to really provide the structure and support. Vines are not able to support themselves, so they use those tendrils to grip onto other things, maybe trellising or fencing or other plants, uh, and that's in order to stay upright. Um, otherwise, of course, with things like um, weather, um, they would get quite severely damaged. So once a tendril has found a supporting structure, it starts to wind itself around it, wrap itself around that structure to really have a tight grip so it gives it that structure and support to keep it upright. Okay, so they're the tendrils. They can be rather strong and tough. Then we have the buds. Okay, so the buds um, these are formed between the um, join, which is between the leaf and the shoot. As you can see here, there is a bud. Um, this is being pointed at this one, but there's a bud just here. There's a bud just there as well. There's a bud just here. Uh, so these form between that main shoot and the leaf. And they are best described as embryonic shoots. Uh, and within, um, within those buds, you have all of the things you need for a whole fresh new shoot. So all of the coding is in there that you need for things like stems and buds and tendrils and leaves and even 
the inflorescence as well. The, um, the flowers are in there as well. And as they mature, of course, they will grow and shoot and then shoot off with things like leaves and so on. So they are your buds. We do not need to go into any greater detail about things like uh, compound buds or prompt buds. So just need to know them as buds at this level. Then we have what's known as the inflorescence, and that is the flowers and berries. OK, let me pop that down, that word that I've mentioned, because it actually is mentioned in your textbook. So let me just uh, get my um, little text thing out. Here we go. And there you are. So the whole sort of description name for it is inflorescence, and that's the flowers, which will then hopefully turn into berries. Um, and the flowers are really the reproductive organs of the vine. Um, a vine's flower is asexual, so it has both um, the male and the female parts. Uh, and uh, they're grouped into those flowers, uh, into like bunches. And in the right conditions, uh, and that's with a little bit of wind or maybe animals that may transport it a little bit, the blossom will pollinate, self-pollinate, and you will gain berries if it is successfully successful. So all of those flowers that are grouped together will turn, of course, into a bunch of grapes, which can then be harvested. But of course, there are many problems that can happen uh, with flowering and fruit set, uh, and we will talk about those at a later point. And then we have the leaves. So the leaves are really the lungs of the vine, absorbing, breathing in the sunlight, and then, of course, using that sunlight's energy for photosynthesis, which uh, is very important. Uh, photosynthesis is the process by which plants use that sunlight, that energy from the sun, to convert water and carbon dioxide into a more complex molecule of glucose. And then uh, oxygen is also given off. Glucose is a very, very important as it's a sugar, which is important in terms of the growth of the vine, but also, of course, ripening very healthy berries. Uh, so that's what forms the sugar within the grapes. OK, so they're the main parts of the green parts of the vine. Then we have the woody parts of the vine and the woody parts of the vine. We are going to be talking about um, the one year old wood. We'll talk about permanent wood uh, and we'll have a little bit around the roots as well on this section too. So first up, we have identified on the same diagram one year old wood. So this would have been green the previous year, but it has lignified and lignification is where the green stems and stalks turn into wood, as you can see here at the bottom that we have of our diagram. Uh, and that will happen during the winter after they have grown. So they've gone through their growth season. They have then, of course, the vines have been harvested for their grapes. And then in that winter, uh, it turns into hard wood. And that is that lignification. The following spring, so the one-year-old wood um, uh, and the buds that were on it um, will burst and grow into shoots. Uh, so they start to grow into shoots. Um, and that's important because if you don't control this, of course, you're going to get a huge tree like structure that is shooting in all directions, a little bit like a Western gunslinger. And you really need to manage that. And that is why pruning is very important in the vineyard, because it is managing the vine. So managing the one year old wood is vital for the grape grower. Uh, as vines will only produce fruit on shoots that grow from buds that developed in the previous year. So you therefore need to manage that in terms of understanding the vine's vigor and the volume that you want to produce from your, your, your crop. Um, so uh, one thing we do need to mention here is really uh, understanding um, the, um, the, the kind of main two forms of pruning the wood. And in winter, the vine will be pruned either into a cane or a spur. Two four-letter words, a cane or a spur. And here we have a picture 
of a trunk of a vine, which has then had the two canes on either side. Uh, in fact, it's got more than two canes, uh, but you've got the canes on either side. And the canes generally will have eight to about 20 at the maximum buds. So somewhere between that, somewhere like 10 to 15 is often quite common, but eight to 20 buds per cane. Um, so that is a cane, and that, that is uh, very classic. You'll hear this being spoken as a geo method, but there are other forms as well. A replacement cane system, for instance. Um, what about if you don't have a cane, then you have a spur. And you'll see there are lots of little spurs just here. So here we go. Let's have a look. Lots of little spurs, and they generally have two or maybe three buds per spur. So you see there's probably just one there. That's on the one behind, there are two. There's two on this one. Uh, there's probably two on that one. There's two there as well. OK, so these are little spurs. Now you have the trunk of the vine. You have something actually here called a cordon. Uh, I'll come to that a little bit later. But these are the spurs, and then they have the buds upon them. OK, so that is a short method, a short pruning method, where a cane is a long pruning method. Um, then we have the permanent wood, and we had that on the previous picture. I'll go back to it just quickly. You've got the same thing here, but as a diagram this time around. So you have uh, this arrow here is pointing to the trunk, and that is permanent wood, which is anchored into the ground. And then you have the other two arrows, which are going to the cordons. This is a double cordon. And that is horizontally trained wood, which is permanent. So it's probably 5, 10, 20, 30, whatever years old, more than one. Then you have on top of that um, the one year old wood, uh, which will then have two buds upon it. Um, we're not going into the detail of pruning in this section. This is just the anatomy of the vine at this point. Um, and the volume of the permanent wood, so how much uh, permanent wood you have per vine is restricted and of course controlled by winter pruning and that is of course the decision of the grape grower keeping the, the grape vines um, in check as it were. Uh, if you don't do that otherwise it's going to grow into a rather large um, unattractive tree-like structure without any of that uniform look to vineyards. I think actually they look quite nice but uh, those wild vines are often not wanted. And then the last, the third um, part of the woody parts of the vine. So we talked about one year old wood, permanent wood. And then the third one is the root systems of the vine. And of course, this is what we find in the ground, in the soil. And root systems are important. Their functionality is threefold. So we have three major reasons that roots are very important for the survival of the vine. First of all, it's found in the soils and in the rocks. So therefore, we find it absorbing water and uh, nutrients from the soil, uh, very important for the health and uh, growth of the vine. Uh, it also therefore gives an anchor to the vine as well. So it uh, anchors it into the ground, which helps support it certainly if there are problems with things like wind or adverse weather, for instance, gives it very good support. And then also um, the root systems can store carbohydrates uh, and that allows the vine to survive during its quite cold winter months. Certainly if it's in a continental zone, very important to draw upon those reserves, those carbohydrate reserves during those winter months. Um, most modern vineyards will be uh, on root systems which are non-vitis vinifera. They are another vitis species, generally from America, as they are resistant to phylloxera, whereas vitis vinifera is not or mainly isn't. Uh, so most of the root systems we find for most modern vineyards will actually be on another vitis species and something like vitis labrusca or riparia, or there are many others as well. Um, we're not gonna go into too much detail about that. That's on another section talking about grafting and phylloxera, but this is just identifying what the roots are at this stage. 
So that brings me to the end of this first part of the vine series and the anatomy of the vine. I hope you found this useful and you're able to now identify key parts of the vine for the level three. Um, there are no working written questions at this point. It will come at the end of the vine section uh, and we'll go through those. That's available on the Wine with Jimmy website. And that's the e-learning portal. Have a go and subscribe to it. You will not be disappointed. Plenty of video footage, plenty of help uh, and support there to get you through your WSET Level 3 certificate. So thank you so much. I've been Jimmy Smith of Wine with Jimmy. I hope to see you soon. If you are in London, come and see us. Come and see us for a class a glass or a bottle at my wine bar Stretton wine house uh, or please uh, do get in touch for any comments questions or concerns as well thank you so much see you soon